Hey you guys, what's up? It's Rockados54 here, and welcome to my horror pack unboxing for the month of May 2023. So, uh, yeah, let's just get this, uh, right opened here. And I'm just gonna apologize in advance if I have to sneeze or blow my nose. It is very hot outside and my allergies are kind of bad. Okay. First one up is, oh, nice, this, I actually haven't seen this yet, and I've wanted to. It's the only one of the series I haven't seen, actually, so this is, that's great, actually. So the first one in here is Annabelle Creation, which, um, this is the second one in the series, and I've seen one and three, but I have not seen this one. Um, you know, I haven't really been a fan of the Annabelle movies up to this point. I really hated the first one, and I didn't really like the third one all that much. The third one had a couple decent moments, though, but, uh, you know, this is great because I heard that Annabelle Creation was actually pretty good, and I know it's from the same director as Lights Out and Shazam, and I enjoyed both those movies. Um, but yeah, so that's great that this is in here because I have been wanting to see this for a little while. This came out in, yeah, 2017. Um, yeah, so that's already a nice start to the pack. And then the next one in here, I feel like I've heard of this one. I, I'm not sure. I the, the name sounds familiar, but I can't quite remember if I've seen it before, but it's this movie called Emily or Amelie. I don't know exactly how you pronounce it, but yeah, as I said, I feel like I might have heard of this. There's nobody that I know of that's in it, and I've never heard of the director before, but um, the plot on the back says, as their parents head out for a date in the city, the three young Thompson children immediately take to their new babysitter, Anna, who seems like a dream come true. She's sweet, fun, and lets them do things that break all their parents' rules. But as Anna's interactions with them take on a more sinister tone, the kids realize that her character may not be who she claims to be, and soon it's up to Big Brother Jacob to protect his siblings from the increasingly nefarious intentions of a very disturbed woman. Featuring a tour de force performance from Bulger and its three young leads, Amelie is a multi-dimensional nail-biting thriller that proves trust can be the most deadly of weapons. Seems like it'll be a pretty good movie. You know, I kind of like these... I don't think I've seen too many of them, but I really like these, like, babysitter-themed horror movies like when I was a kid there was always something that seemed like very very scary and like just disturbing about them like I remember reading I don't even remember to this day what the book's about because I read it so long ago but the book The Babysitter 3 by R.L. Stein. I read that when I was in like second grade and I remember really really liking it and remember thinking it was really quite scary um but yeah and then the two movies that are on Netflix The, ba uh, the Babysitter and The Babysitter Killer Queen which McGee directed love both those those are two of like my favorite films of the decade, honestly. Well, the actually, the second one came out in 2020, but the first one came out in 2017, which I just absolutely adore that movie. I think it's so good. And I have to take a drink of water. It is really hot outside. I'm gonna have to get the fan going in here after I get this video finished. The next one in here is... Okay, this is the exclusive. This is a very interesting cover and yeah i've never you know i've never heard of this one either but it's this one called prosper but the the thing on the back seems like it the thing on the back sounds familiar it says the last witch of salem feasts tonight i feel like i've I feel like i've heard that phrase in a different movie but i can't remember which one it was i mean maybe it was hocus pocus i don't know um, but it says, the rumored daughter of Sarah Good, the first witch to be tried and hung during the Salem witch trials, lives and commands the spirit world at her fingertips. Irene, as she is known, must sacrifice the lives of a small group of youths every 30 years for preserving her own youthful appearance, powers, and prosperity. This really sounds like a Hocus Pocus ripoff. <laughs> Um, on this day, Irene sets the bait for Dalton, an unassuming young man looking for closure in his brother's accidental death. She promises Dalton the allure of reconnecting with his deceased sibling while suggesting he bring his friends along for the show. Sam, Dalton's closest friend, ignores the warning signs, tags along for the ride, and finds herself the only person left alive after a night of gruesome events. So hopefully this will be pretty good. It does sound, um, kind of similar to, uh, Hocus Pocus, but it almost seems like, for some reason, I'm getting, like, big Goosebumps vibes from just, like, reading the plot I, I mean who knows maybe it will be but uh i was gonna say if it really did feel like a goosebumps episode that'll be really cool um and then the last one in here oh this is actually one i have seen this actually it's kind of interesting that this is in here because i actually did see this in theaters and it's one i've never really thought about too much it wasn't like amazing um 
But now that I, like, have it from the horror pack, I'm almost wondering, like, should I maybe re-watch it? Because I didn't, like, absolutely love this movie, but it was okay. It's interesting to see it in here, because it seems to kind of just be, like, swept under the rug by most people. Um, but it's The Turning with Mackenzie Davis and Finn Wolfhard and Brooklyn Prince. I saw this in the theater on my on my 19th birthday, actually. I saw it with Nathan, and I, as I said, I thought it was okay. There was some, like, decent moments in there. I liked Finn Wolfhard in it. Um, the one thing that I didn't, one of the things I really didn't like about it, though, was how quickly it ended. Like, I remember, like, I thought, like, that, like, just when it seemed to be, like, really getting going, it ended, like, five, ten minutes later. I was like, what? That's the end? I'm like, it feels like it should have gone on for longer, but, yeah, now that I have this, I feel like I should rewatch it. It has been a while, as I said, haven't seen it since theaters, but, um... Uh, it also says there's an alternate ending on here, which I remember when I was walking out of the theater with Nathan, I was like, I feel like that there's, like, other endings to this movie. I was like, I really want to now see the alternate ending. So, now that I have this Blu-ray, I can see it. Hopefully the ending will be better than the theatrical one. But, uh, I also remember when I went to see this in theaters, like, me and Nathan walk in, and we were by far the youngest people in that entire theater. Like, we're, like, we're looking around, and there is not a single person in that theater who is younger than 45 years old. <laughs> and I'm thinking, I'm like, this, I'm like, this movie's rated PG-13. Like, you know, it's, it's kind of, I mean, I think it's kind of marketed to, you know, like, maybe slightly younger people, because, I mean, you know, Finn Wolfhard is, like, you know, he's a pretty popular young star, you know, after It and Stranger Things, you'd think that the younger generation would, um, you know, really be drawn to it, but there was, like, no one younger than 45 people, no one younger than the age of 45 in my theater, and there was, like, 30 people at least, I think, in the theater, it was, like, a decently, um, it was a decently attended showing, and then, like, as the opening credits start, it says, based on the book The Turning of the Screw by John Grisham, at least that's what I think it's, The Turning of the Screw... The Turn of the Screw by Henry James. Sorry, not John Grisham. Um, but as, when it said based on the book, and I, I think me and Nathan both said to each other, oh, they're all here because they read the book. Now that makes sense. Um, but yeah, that's interesting to see this in here. I didn't, I honestly didn't expect this. As I said, this seems like a movie that just was really swept under the rug, like, as soon as it came out. But um, yeah, I am interested to see this again. Hopefully I'll like it more on a second viewing, but um. Yeah, this seems like a pretty decent pack. There's two, like, pretty well-known horror movies in here, which is nice, and I am excited to check out, uh, Amelie, this, or Emily, this seems like, um, seems like a one that would be very interesting, and, uh, I'm wondering if this, uh, this one that sounds very similar to Hocus Pocus will be any good, and, yeah, two well-known horror movies, one that I am quite excited to watch, because I heard it was pretty good, and I've seen the other two, but, um, yeah, so anyway, guys, that's going to be it for this video. Uh, subscribe for more content. Please leave a like on the video if you enjoyed. And remember, you guys, whenever leaving your kids with a psycho, say no to drugs.